Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer, Tony Atlas. Yay! Tony, we didn't get enough Super Chats on the live show. I still don't have a watch, but it's got to be Tuesday night at 10. Let me check my watch. Yep, 10 o'clock right on the dot there, brother. Yep, you're right. Brand new wrestling inside us at your house is next. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year of unknown with professional wrestling content galore, and we need you to join our family every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after we review the previous night's Monday Night Raw. It's Wrestling Insiders at your house with the unpredictable WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights after WWE, NXT, and AEW at 10 p.m., you never know who's going to show up on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey Through the 80s and 90s on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday nights after the lights go down at the Thunderdome on SmackDown, it's John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. If you want early, ad-free access to all of our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and to help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. Get this limited edition Bailey autographed Rob Schamberger out print, one of only 50 made. A great addition to the collection of any Bailey fan, direct from WWE. Also comes with a mystery autograph photo and an on air shout out from WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA Tony Atlas on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti along with Tony Atlas. Tony, a pleasure to have you with us here well, tonight. Thank you there, Mr. Dan. It's a pleasure always to be here with Boston Wrestling. As the, the number one broadcast wrestling show on the internet and soon in the whole world. Unbelievable. The soon to be a wrestling hall of fame and in that movies, In movie, May, movie. hopefully we'll be going down to Texas. Moving the, my boobies. Well, I'm moving my boobies. The, as the move, fans move, always move. want to know, Tony, how is the lovely, the radiant Monica White. Well, like with most people that is hospitalized right now, life is not good because they can have no visitors. Imagine being in penitentiary and you're not allowed to leave your room, you're not allowed to leave your jail cell. Right now, if you were incarcerated in your local penitentiary, you would have more freedom than my wife got right now because she cannot interact with other people. She's, she's, she's locked down in her room. And I want to tell people out there, if you got loved one, mom, sister, brother, anybody that is hospitalized right now, try not to call them once a week or once a month because they got no visitation. If you can, call them every day. There is people right now that, that my wife tell me that refuse to eat their own hunger strike because they're so lonely and they feel so neglected. Aww. So if you got a mom or anybody in a nursery home or in, in long-term care, try to find the effort. Five minutes a day, five minutes phone call a day will do these people wonder. You want to do something, really show your love for your loved one that is right now hospitalized in nursery home, call more than just once a week. I talked to a lady out there, well, I'll, I'll talk to my mom, uh, you know, on the computer there uh, once every week. Well, six days, this woman is sitting around 
with no one to talk to, no one to show any love or any compassion to. So you got loved ones in the nursery home, this is not the time for you to, to neglect them. They're not going to be here long, so you're going to regret it. And you'll regret it. You, you know what? You're going to regret it. You're going when, to regret it. When people say, pass oh, I like that, I, I could have, would have, should have. If everybody started running, I should have done this, I should have done that. Forget about what you don't want to be one of them. I should have people. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, on to the world of professional wrestling. I, 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 but I say this. I hope Monica knows how much the fans actually have an interest in care. Well, I don't, I, hopefully I you've told her. That's one thing that I really appreciate about the fans, just about every segment or, or just about every email or whatever I get, somebody would ask that question, how's your wife doing? And I, I owe Monica my life. I would have died 31 years ago yep. if it wasn't for Monica. I owe that woman my life. I would have been dead if it wasn't for Monica. And I spoke about it in 2006 in Chicago at the Hall of Fame. Yep. I, I praise her for saving me. I, I would have been, been dead. Y'all been talking about the late Tony, the late Tony Atlas, Atlas that died 30 years ago. And what would Tony, what would have came with Tony if he had lived? That's how, that would the conversation be about me now. What if Tony Atlas had lived? Well, I did live, you know, thanks to Monica. So everything I ever did in the last 30 years, I owe, to, I owe to Monica. Everything I did in the last, the last 30 years of my life, I owe to my wife, Monica. And she's still an inspiration to me now, even though she's hospitalized with a stroke. She's still a great, great influence in my life right now. I can't go a day without talking. I call my wife anywhere between three to four times a day. Well, I can't wait for her to be able to get out of that hospital oh, so we can God, meet her me in person. Too. Oh, oh it, it drives me nuts that I can't hug her and kiss her and love her and give her the, give her the love it's and just, attention. The, I, I, just, I hope she knows that even though these fans have never met her, just from the stories you tell from your heart, yeah. have touched a lot of fans at yeah. home. And we're all rooting for her. We want her to get better. We want her to be home at Atlas Estates yeah. on Millionaire I'm Boulevard up in Auburn. Her, trying to get her some home care now. Yeah. Some home care. Do you, so. do you think it's going to happen soon? Well, it, it would, I think it would have happened uh, this year if it, it wasn't, wasn't yeah. for the coronavirus. But the coronavirus just set everything back. Not just in my life. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that have so many plans. I know oh, sure. you have. Look at our live yeah. events. <laughs> yeah, live How events. How we were so, destroyed. So everybody now is in a, a terrible, terrible uh, a setback. But now we got new leadership. And I just hope and pray that the new leadership in this country put more emphasis in fighting this virus than the old administration did. Because the old administration, they just wiped their hands of it. Leave it to the governors. What a freaking... I know you're not a fan uh, of that state. Not, not that, because you got, you got to stop and think. We got 50 states. We got 50 governors, which means... 50 different opinions. Exactly. All How right. How in the hell is that going to work? All right. Well, again, we send Monica our best. I look forward to the day I can make that trip up 95 north to Maine to make the visit to Atlas Estates and be able to meet this lady in person. Maybe give her some chocolates or uh, flowers or something like that and f see all the good that you've described over the years about her. And Dan is very special. Y'all don't know this. But I live in an all-white neighborhood and Dan is the first white guy to come to my house. What? You are. Really? Yeah. Oh. What about Glantz? And I live in an all-white neighborhood. What about Glantz? Well, I tell you, I got invited the other day, Dan. Where? To, to a person's house. Yeah. They invited me for, for well, it, was, it was a while back. They invited me over for Thanksgiving. Oh, really? Yeah, this year. I got because, you know, my wife. They knew you were home. alone. Yeah. Well, they knew I was all alone. So some of my nice neighbors, they said, Tony, you don't have to eat Thanksgiving alone. That's how nice Mainers are. They said, Tony, you could come and you could have, and this is a true story now, said you could come and have Thanksgiving dinner with us. If Free you like. meal? Uh, yeah. I said, oh, sure. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I didn't want to hurt their feelings, so I took them up on the invitation. As I walked through the door, I looked around. <laughs> And I told her, I, I knew the husband. I didn't know the wife that well, and I didn't know the kids that well, but I knew the husband. And I said, I said, brother, I really want to thank you for inviting me over for Thanksgiving dinner. Do you realize this is the first time
that I've been into white people homes while they were staying at home. I did that. I did. I did the first time. I went to white people houses while they were staying at home. The grandma watched me the whole time I was there. When I finished my meal, the grandmother come over and took my silverware. Oh, I take that for you. You don't have to do that. I take that for you. She, <laughs> we, the husband, well, the husband, me and him, we good friends. Do they you, live on your street? No, no, they, 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 don't, oh, they, they okay. live in the next town over a town called Manor. They live oh, out in okay. the countryside. Beautiful home out in the country. But, you know, most all the blacks in, in, in my area, they live in a downtown area. Well, I got to know Auburn a little bit with all our trips up yeah, there. Yeah, but summer. I live yeah. in town more. But they live like out. I got you. Out, that, that, yeah, and you know what? Sometimes that, on our trips out, it is kind of a... Yeah, when you get out, you see it get, yeah. Once you get Rural. outside of town, it kind of like houses, and, you know, a half a mile apart. Yeah. But but it was so funny. Now, the husband knew me. The wife didn't that well. So the wife was trying to carry on conversations so she could follow me. The kids started laughing. The country figure I was joking. The husband tr was like, holding like back his laughter yeah. you know, so, so he could continue to joke. But the grandmother was so nervous. I went to use the bathroom, and when I opened the bathroom door, the grandma came in right behind me and started looking around the bathroom. Really? Yeah, because I told her that. Would you let her walk on you? No, no, no. no what no. about the wife? These are nice people. What they, about they, the wife? No, no, I don't fool nobody's wife. Ain't well, what if wife. he gave permission for her to walk on I don't get, I don't care. No, I, I, I tell no you this. No, no, no. Technical nope. director Tony today. Atlas do not fool in any kind of way with nobody's wife. I technical There's director. There's too many single women out here to mess with somebody's wife on any for anything. If if that man was not home, yeah, and that woman invite me over, yeah, I ain't going. You no wouldn't one. go in. I well, said, well, when your husband gonna be? Oh, it's okay. He said you could visit. I don't care what he said. I don't. I'm not going. I never went to this woman's house unless he were at home. I'm, my mother did better not raise. Better safe than sorry. Well, it's respectable too. Yeah. My mother didn't raise no food. Something happened. This man get jealous or hear some rumors or something. Get around. All of a sudden, our friendship. We got this. Me, me and this man got a twenty-year relationship, and I'm not going to lose a twenty-year friend over his wife. Well, I tell you, our technical director Jackie saw your uh, part of your foot video for the first time today, and he was he was taken aback. He was amazed at your honesty in describing your fetish for women's shoes and being walked and stepped on and kicked. Uh, so, you know, your honesty, it well, can... Well, see, you can't broad breast everything. Yeah. And that's what we got a bad habit of doing. Yeah. Like, I listen to people, I listen to Democrats, when a, when a Democrat do something, they say, well, they all do that. And I listen to Republican, when a Republican do something. Instead of sticking to that, they say, well, they all do that. Well, what are you doing? You broad brushing every politician in the world as being the same yeah. when it's not. If they all was like that, this country would be doing as good as it's doing. If we had all that dishonesty. They got country that got that. Yeah. This ain't one of them. And all the people that believe that is people that never, most of the people that believe that is people that never left their hometown. You understand what I'm saying? They kind of backworld thinking people that never been nowhere, but we got the greatest uh, our country in the world, and you can't broad breast everything. Right. I used to get broad breasted uh, stereotype a lot because for being black. I will be, uh, one time I went Mario Savoti. Yeah. You would like this story. I'll try All to make right. it quick. I went Mario Savoti, and he used to do a, a town up, and you probably remember Cutchers. Oh, in New York. Yeah, 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 yeah. Up yep. in that area. Cutchers, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Cutchers. It's a remember? resort. Resort, yeah, yep. old Cutchers Resort. So we were there one time, and so Mario somehow got the police department involved. And it was, they're going to play a basketball game. The wrestler, Tony Rumble, was, was there. It would be the wrestlers against the police department basketball team. It was a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. The police chief went to Tony Rumble and said, you know this is unfair. And Tony said, in what way? Well, y'all got a black guy. And Tony said, well, don't you have a black cop? 
He said, no, we don't have a black cop that plays on our team. He said, well, it's not my fault that Tony black. He said, why, you don't, you want them to set out the game or something? He, did, said, he said, well, because I'm black. Did you know that Tony Rumble played college basketball? Yeah, I knew oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah, Tony told me. He so, was very good. He, he was. So, so he, he would say, well, let's just play the game. I said, well, let's just play the game. But they was nervous because they had a black basketball player. So the whistle blow. They give me the ball. I, I couldn't dribble. <laughs> I couldn't shoot. <laughs> Everybody on that court knew how to play basketball but me. You never played hoops? Not a day in my life. That and was they the were first. worried. <laughs> I played b- basketball one time my whole life, and that was the one time I played. Really? That was the only time I ever played basketball any day in my life was with Tony Rumble and them in Cutcher, and everybody was just shocked. And then one guy came up to me and said, you playing, right? I said, no. <laughs> he said, you're not joking around? I said, no, I, said, I don't play basketball. He said, yo, you got to play basketball. You black. That's what he think. He's never been around black people. A lot of people, when, I, when people used to ride with me, with me a, a lot, with the, my wrestling days, I would stick a Johnny Cash tape in there. <laughs> hey, you listen to this, Tony? I go, like, oh, yes, I like country music. But they figure because I'm black, I should be listening to R and B or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, let's get into some of the topics. Is called, is, they even call that brawl brushing. Is that what the guy did? Yeah. They take a brush and just paint everybody yeah. the same. Well, everybody is individual. Everybody's different. Since I've said this now. And I That's a you, perfect segue to have the opening segment. Everybody's but, different. You know, uh, in a, since the beginning of time, there have been trillions, trillions of people that have walked this earth. Billions and trillions of people that have walked this earth yeah. since the beginning of time. Yeah. Not one person since the beginning of time had the same fingerprint or DNA. So how, we, interesting. how can we all be the same? Right. There have not been one person born. That's why the police book could use your DNA to track to you. That's why they use your fingerprint. Right. If we, if, 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 because it's only one, this fingerprint is only one. And yeah. there would never be another one. There was none before this one, and there'd be none after this one. And that says the beginning of mankind. And to go with your DNA. So, how, so we all are different. All right, Tony, let's talk a little bit about that. I know some, several fans emailed us about the passing of the natural Butch Reed on Friday. We actually did a special episode Saturday night. If you want to check that out in the archives, again, our best wishes to the Reed family, his friends, his fans. Uh, but Tony, a uh, very interesting story that came to light over the past few days. Uh, Tyler Rex, who was part of WWE when you were with the company, uh, I don't know if you heard about what happened to Tyler recently, or ta- what happened with Tyler recently. The last I know about Tyler, he was on that show with the, the, the Gumphrey show, Greg Gumphrey. Yeah. Well, he worked for Fox News. Well, Tyler Rex actually uh, underwent a sex change operation and came out as a transgender. He is stop, now, no, stop! He's now female. Stop! I'm not lying. Come on now. I'm not, who do you think, do you think I'm making this up? He look like she Kong. He now, now he goes by Gabby Tough. Stop it now. That's a joke. No, I'm not making it up. I just saw him on TV with the big beard and stuff on the Greg Gunkel show on Fox News. No, you're talking, that's Brodus Clay. Oh, Brodus Clay. Tyler. (laughs) Tyler Rex was more like a beach type guy. He had the long black hair and was really good shape. I think he was part of ECW when you were there. I to know who you're talking about. Well, I, I tell you, Tony. What they, just call, they, they, they just call him the big guy Rex at one time, right? Uh, no. But they called him a brontosaurus, I think. Brontosaurus, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's who I thought you were talking about. Could you imagine Can that? I, no, wow. I could not. <laughs> six foot, six foot six, three hundred and fifty pounds. <laughs> you know what I mean? What do you call it? It was she hawk. He be she Kong. <laughs> well, <laughs> King Kong. He be she Kong. He big brute. Ah! <laughs> I, but, <laughs> <laughs> wow! Well, I'm glad you're getting such a laugh out of it. You just messed my whole night up there. Now I'm a picture of. 
the, 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 the Thomas Rex, what is his name? Uh, Brutus Clay. Brutus Clay. Brutus Clay. Brutus Clay in drag. That's his fucking No, they, you got the wrong it. guy. What a, I didn't know. What did Tyler Rex look like? He had kind of kind of like braided long black hair and uh Oh a, a kind of a lot of looking kid? Yeah, yeah. Uh, tall. Yeah. And he underwent a sex change operation. And I, I believe he's the first professional wrestler to do so that I know of. It's I would a have never very interesting story. It's damn sure. I, I used to I, I used to travel with that guy. I never never dawned on me. So he's gay. I don't know. You know, I never would have pictured him. The transgender world is, is kind of different. It's kind of unique. He's I know real, he's real muscular. And everything. Oh yeah, yes. yeah. Big kid, about six four. Here at the studio, uh, I, I don't know if him. I should say that, but here at the studio, we have someone that is around of sometimes. It's transgender, and they went through the change midlife, wow. and they're still with their wife and kids. So wow. I mean, I don't know if that necessarily means gay, but. He felt like he was a woman, and now he is she. Wow. He's Gabby. And I can't, I have not heard of any other wrestler going through that change. Is, is Vince using him? Or? Oh, no, he's long gone from Vince. Yeah, because he was back in 2008, 2009 with yeah. me. Yeah, I exactly. Tyler Rex. What a unique story it would be if he was still under contract to WWE. Wow, You'd think yeah. they could take advantage of that. But he, he don't look the type. Well, I mean, how do you know what's in someone's brain? Well, I know what's in my brain, you know. <laughs> Not much. No, you, you, you're right, so I, I don't, well, it, You know, sometimes it's good not to have too much in your brain because you got less to worry about. I wonder if it made him feel uncomfortable being around guys in the locker room like that. Whoa. You, you I, I, and you know, there's several ways. You, I almost wish Dr. David Reese was here. You could look at it as, geez, maybe he was... Horribly uncomfortable being around guys like that. You should get him to. Uh, or maybe he was in a or she was in a situation you need to do where a phone conversation with him to get his side. She of was it. like it was like a buffet with all the guys walking around naked. If well, she is like, gay, like I don't know if she's gay or where, not. Where, that, that's the, that's what you just said. Some people just feel more comfortable cross dressing, but have no desire to be with a man. They just. But know. for her to go through the process of actually having the the sex change operation, that's. That's a major life event. Well, he's a I, big kid, too. He's about 6'4". You yeah, got to go by she now. Um, but, but, I mean, have you ever heard of any transgender wrestlers that are kind of done a closet in it? Because I, I don't know of any. I don't even know any transgender people. I've known some transgender Nobody people. Nobody had a set, I mean, that changed over. Well, you know? it's just one of the more unique stories in professional wrestling. Right? Well, I had one experience with some transgender one What time. happened? Let's see this. We was in Underground Atlanta. Oh, here, Underground. Oh, boy, I love this one. Keep going. Did you hear about this? Yep. The Underground Atlanta. Tina Turner was ready to have you take out Ike Turner at the, at the yeah, nightclub. Yep, and she wanted to talk to me. My buddy Fred said, oh, don't wait for her. You go. Come on and go, come on and go with me. I got two hot chicks just ready to go. So I said, yeah. I said, ain't nothing gonna happen with me and this woman anyway. She just wanna talk to me. I said, but these ladies, they're gonna give it up. You know, they ready to Freddie say they ready. They ready to do it. They ready to give it up. I was all good. I said, at least I don't have to stay up all night trying to talk myself into somebody's bed. I said, these, these girls are willing. So my buddy went and got the car and, and Pulled around the front, and uh, the girls were already sitting in the back seat. I got in the passenger seat, the front seat. We get to the hotel, the passport in in Jonesboro, Georgia, which is maybe about 15 or 20 mile drive outside of Atlanta. So I've been drinking beer all night, so immediately I had to go use the bathroom. Well, I'm in the bathroom, I hear this deep voice saying this, I thought you knew. <laughs> And Fred is hollering, Tony, help, Tony, help, help, help. So I peeked through the bathroom. I'm still urinating, you know, trying not to pee on the floor. Yeah. But I had to peek That's around the corner. That's usually a good thing. Yeah, I peeked around the corner so I could see what he was talking about. Well, then I saw it. They had breasts like a woman, face like a woman, everything like a woman, except that the, the toolbox was the same as my toolbox. So one... <laughs> Was trying to hold Fred. <laughs> <And the whole laughs> one, 
<laughs> the one and the one that turned around and go, oh, so you like to get rough. You like to get rough a little bit. Did your friend tell to help me? Tell to help me. And so I come out the door and they go, oh, because I had my shirt off. They go, oh. And I said, look, I don't want to kick your asses. I said, but y'all fool her. I said, well, I said, here's $20 a piece. Here's $20 a piece. Why don't y'all go to the front, go to the front desk and, 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 uh, 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 uh. Why did you give them $20? To catch a cab. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't going to take them back. I thought I found out, you know, I did. I caught oh. you know, because I was horny. I wanted to do something. I found out these two guys, and one had, was bigger than me, you know, <laughs> between the legs. So I, you know, what How I'm do doing. you know? They just whipped them out? Yeah, yeah. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got to get even. I don't even need the script at this point. Jack, I. Because they pulled their pants. Now, what off. year is this? This is the 70s. Around 78, 79. You, and and I'm you, not going to call my friend's name, but every Christmas I call him up and I say this to him I thought you knew. He go, F you, Tony. F you. F you. You, F were you. At a, you were at a nightclub where Tina Turner was performing. Well. And Tina Turner kind of came on to you, if I recall. Well, I don't know. It was, she just wanted to get to know me. I don't think it was. Oh, she I wanted, think she wanted to get to know you all right. Yeah, well, what but happened, all then, the fans, well, all the fans ran around me, and then she wanted to know what I did. I told her I was a wrestler. And then my buddy Fred came up at that time. Before I, I hadn't even sat at my table at all. Because I, what we do in the old days, we would drink out alcohol before yeah. we get to the club. Because you get a six pack of beer, you know, back then, yeah. like three dollars. Where when you get to the club, they want six dollars for yeah. one beer. And you already so, got a buzz. Yeah, so I get myself a little buzz, and then what I do when I get to the club, I would order me a screwdriver. Oh, I love screwdrivers. Yeah, I take a screwdriver and I sit there and sip on my screwdriver. Where I just order my screwdriver, have one sip, when Fred come running up. With the, with, you know, with the, with the... So you, you were at this club where Tina Turner was performing. Yeah, You're with your friend Atlanta, Fred. Yeah. yeah. And he met these two, what he thought were women. Thought they were women. Hot women. That wasn't women. And you went back to the hotel. I found out they were You had women. to go to the bathroom and you started to urinate, not wanting to hit the floor, apparently. Yeah. And then what happened with Fred? I mean, they just started Fred, to get undressed. Fred, I saw Fred out of the corner of my eye pulling his clothes off before we got in the door. Oh, door. really? Fred was ready to go. I mean, he was, he was, he about ready to bust a So these, tr these women, they just, they undressed? They had real breasts. No, yeah, yeah. And penises. And penises. So I, I think that that would be. They hadn't had the full operation. Chicks yet. with dicks, I think, is the yeah. term. Yeah. Well, I tell you, happened. I tell you another story too. Where I ran into that. Yeah. Right. And I, I'm not gonna. Call, I tell you the guy's name after the event, but I'm not gonna spread his name. So all it's over someone the in the business. Yes. Okay. He's he's, he's a sucker generation. Oh. Okay. But I tell you his name afterward. All right. And if, and you know, I with Mario. So voted in yeah. New Jersey. We go to a strip joint. Yeah. That is fully naked. Yeah. Fully naked. Which means they take off everything. Yeah. No panties. Everything. No panties. N they take the panties, everything off. It's totally naked. You know, you go to most strip joints, they just show the breasts. Yeah. This breast, vagina, everything. 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 This wrestler was sitting at the bar kissing this girl. The owner said, Look, uh, you guys are pretty big guys, uh, so I figure it'd be natural to tell you guys there's not one woman in the whole place. And I go, wait a minute. I said, they got vaginas, it looked like to me. He said, he said everybody here had, had the full operation. All the dances? All the dances. Oh, my Lord. Was guys, he said there, there's not a woman in the whole place place. My buddy is kissing, licking her neck and kissing them, having a good time. She's playing with his pucker, everything. And so I turned to Mario, Savoldi, and I said, Mario, should I tell him? And Tommy Savoldi, you know Tommy. Yeah, yeah. Nah, <laughs> don't tell him nothing. You spoiled the fun. <laughs> <laughs> and right now today, he do not know that that was a man that he was with. Get out of town. I never he never figured him. out? He never, never knew? Never told him. Never told him. Oh, my him. God. You want to hear a funny one? I don't know if this story came from Tony, or do you remember the pink assassin, Bobby Shoup? Yes. It would involve Sheiky Baby. And I don't know if it was the nightclub where Tony bounced, but Sheik was in town, 
And you know, he... he Hell Kitchens. What's that now? The Hell Kitchens. Kit, the kit, kitchen. The kit, kit, no, kitchen. the Combat Zone. Combat Zone, but no, he worked at Hell Kitchen. That was the name of the club. Oh, that was the name? Okay. Yeah. So, so she had this, was with, you know, getting with this lady, and then they had to explain to him that it was, she was, I don't know if she was transgender, cross dress or whatever the term may be, yeah. but Cheeky Baby was a little disappointed, but he went, how about just a, 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 a blood job? I believe it. He's on it now. He's on it now. I was talking to a guy the other day that I knew several wrestlers, several wrestlers. Yeah. Like when you we went to Japan and stuff, they couldn't get the Japanese girl. I had wrestlers that is straight try to come on to me. They were that horny. Well, it's an interesting business we're in, Tony. I say this. I wish yeah. Tyler Rex the best. I hope. In fact, a little midget told me that oh, Rufus R. Jones. A midget? Yeah, he shared a room with Rufus R. Jones, and Rufus tried to climb on top of Who him. Who was the midget? Uh, it's a black, he's a black midget. Haiti kid? Wasn't Haiti kid. I know Haiti kid. God, he was with Vince, too. But we was doing a thing for the, uh, the Youth Foundation or something yeah. down in New Jersey. And, and Rufus tried to violate the midget? Yeah. yeah. The midget got drunk and fell asleep, and, and, and Rufus tried to stick him in his sleep. Rufus was going to roof him. Told, and Rufus told him, you probably like Big Dick. You probably like the Big Dick. And he said, I don't like Big Dick, Little Dick, No Dick. And he said he went and slept in the hallway because Rufus would leave him alone. That's a... Horrible story. We were going to rape. We were going to well, well, didn't Rufus whip it out near you one night? Yeah, he would. Yeah. Yeah, some of them guys, when they got real horny. They didn't care. Cause they had this idea. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think maybe they, deep down they were bisexual no, human beings? They were just horny. They were just straight men that wanted a physical body. Because the, the, the mentality is, it's just like that's why men get raped in prison. They're not gay, but they feel if they're doing it to you, then they're not. You're on a gate if you're on a receiving end. Like how the sheik had to humble people in Iran. Yeah, he, he don't think that's gay. No, he said there it was only considered gay if you were the one... Getting it. Right. So a lot of, there's a lot of people here that got that. I know a lot of them know... Well, I've that's... never been to Iran. Right. I, I, it's in my book about Red Eye Hinton. This got nothing to do with being Who? gay. Who? Red Eye Hinton. Who he was Red one, Eye Hint? He was the he a was wrestler. The grand, he was no. He was the grand wrestler of the KKK uh, 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 in, 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 in the Clifford Falls Covington area back in the fifties and sixties. Yeah. And he was a farmer, but we call him Red Eye because one of his eyes, the white part, was red. It was something? What you call that when your eye get red? Uh, he had one eye, and the white part was red. I can't. I can't think. Yeah, of, I know what it is. I can't think yeah, of the term. Or something. You know now. Is, you know. I, I, we didn't know what it was then, but you know now yeah. people people had that problem. And his last name was Hinton. 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 And he had two brothers, Ron and Harold Hinton. And Harold Hinton would talk like this. Two Hinton. 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 In fact, I wrote about them in my book. I don't really remember that. Stabbed part. In the back with a, I was fighting his two boys, and, he, and I got stabbed in the back with he a pitchfork. He stabbed you? In the back with a pitchfork. Really? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. And what happened there, when I, I, I got a fight first with his two sons, Harold and Ron. Because what happened was, they, they called us over to Hall Hay. Yeah. Because that's how country people make their living. Well, most people didn't have money. Mm -hmm. back in them days. So when you work for them, they would give you something. Mm -hmm. Just like when I go clean out a chicken coop, they would give me a crate of eggs. Yeah. And it was 24, it was like four to six lovers, but it's 24 eggs in these lovers. You got a lot so, of eggs. A lot of eggs. So so let's say it's six, it, it's, it's six lovers. So six times 24 is how many eggs you got. So that's what they would give me. If I go and help a guy uh, plant corn or uh, that's what you took home. You took home yeah, corn. Some or sometimes corn. they sometimes they say, hey, my mom just made these fresh tomatoes. Take these tomatoes home to your mom. So that's they're called horse trading. Because people up in the Appalachian and Alligator Mountain, the Blue Ridge Mountain, they didn't have money all the time, you know? So they, they would trade off. Just like I would come and do some work on his farm, where he would come to my mother's house and do some work on her house. 
Yeah, you see what I'm saying? There was no money at Chase. Nobody had no money to at Chase. So one time we had them haul hay. Sometimes you exchange goods. Right, right. And, and, and sometimes I would go work for them, and they got some old hang-me-down clothes that their son used to have, but it's, it's too small for him now. So they didn't have a Goodwill or not to donate your clothes to. They had a Salvation Army, but I don't think Goodwill was right. So they would give it to poor families, you know, the, the, the leftover yeah. clothes. You know, with their clothes, we took them, you know. Uh, and so anyway, make a long story short, I got in a fight with, with uh, Harold first because he, I started making fun. It was my fault. I started making fun of the way he talked. He go, you know, you you. You better move that damn hay and stop throwing that hay up here where I can't get it. So I said, well, I knew the best I could. So he got mad at me. He jumped down off the trailer and he punched me. So he I punched, punched him back. So I punched him back. Then his brother Ron jumped in it. So I started fighting both of them. Well, I was a pretty good little scrapper in my day. So I started beating both of them. So all the... Older black guys that worked in the uh, work in the field with me, yeah, they come up and they go, uh, "Man, that's good. You whoop both of them. That's good." So I walk by the neighborhood and everybody say, "Hey, don't mess with that kid." There, I just saw him beat up the two hitting boy. So I was kind of like a, a hero among the black in the black neighborhood because you took out the man with the strange voice. No, because I fought a white person. Oh, okay. All right, that makes sense. Days, yeah. Brother, that didn't happen. That wasn't was fighting. Yeah, I yeah, beat yeah. up two white people. Now, I was a big hero. Yeah. In a black neighborhood, there be somebody that would stand up to white oppression. Then her a red eye Hinton came by and said, "Tony, I got a small field that I need you to help me with." Yeah. So it's just him. When I get to the field, his two boys are there. Oh. So, you know, I'm taking the hay with the pitchfork, throwing it on the trailer. See, some people later on they came with the hay bale, you know, with yeah. the hay bale. And uh, I'm throwing the hay up on the up on the wagon and everything. And so he he's sitting up on the tractor. He's a big fat guy. And he's looking at me, chewing tobacco. And the tobacco juice used to run down the corner of his mark right yeah. all that nasty. You know, the tobacco, if tobacco juice and food would be on his shirt. So he said, hey boy, come on over here. I hear that you attacked my boys without them looking. You didn't give them a fair chance. Let me see you take them all now where the fight is fair. I said, okay. And he said, and you better not fight back. And you better not fight back? No, he told me, you better not fight back. He said, that would make that would make things even. So I'm standing up, and I let Ron hit me. I let You Harold actually let them do it? Wait, wait a minute. All right, brother. All right. all right, all right, keep going. Brother, I, you know, I've seen people get lynched. Okay? They didn't cut out lynch until 68. It was legal until 68, brother. So we knew that we could get lynched. You know that. Especially if you're in the hills of Virginia. Where there's no sheriff, no police department, no fire department. The nearest police department is in Clifton Ford, which is four miles away. Oh. Okay, and then Covington, which is eight miles away. We in a village here, okay? One store, the commissary. No, brother. You know, you mess with white people back there. So anyway, to make a long story short, not if you want to live. So uh, you let them hit you? I let him hit me. I let the other one hit me. So I told the uh, red eyed, I said, okay, that's enough. He's like, ah, I tell you when it's done, your boys get him. So I started fighting back. Oh? I yeah. started fighting back. He got down off the tractor, got behind me, and took his picks for and stabbed me in the back. How deep? It hurt like hell. Really? It, 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 hurt, it hurt like hell. I think if I was heavier, he would have killed me. But I was so light that I fell forward. So oh. I had these little, I would say it's really about, Maybe about an inch. You still have scars? No, no, they're all gone now. They, they probably do. I can't see my you back. Can't see back. There, I can't yeah. see my back. So, so, so they were about an inch deep. It went about an inch deep. And then, while I was laying on the ground, blood running down, I could feel blood dripping down between the cracks of my butt. Yeah. They got on top of me. They beat the shit out of me. The three of them? No, the two boys. Oh. Uh, his two sons. I got up. It almost sounds like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Before, before I was getting pats on the back, 
I was a great guy. Now, after I'm walking home, I'm bleeding. I'm crying. I knew you was a troublemaker. You're going to make trouble for all of us. I knew this was going to turn out bad. I knew you were Who not said gonna, that? The black people. Really? They were scared that they, they're going to get, that they were going to retaliate against them for allowing me to hit a white person. Red Eye Hinton was the type of guy that he would have sex with his daughter. <laughs> yes. He would have Red Eye had sex with his daughter? Yes, he had sex. He Sounds had like daughter. what happens at the he rug store. Have, he we would have and have sex with his daughter. Yeah. And not only him, his daughter at that time, I think she was like 12 or 13. Yeah. He would let guys that worked the railroad would pay him to have sex with his 12 and 13-year-old daughter. There was a lot of incest going on in the South. See, a lot of people don't realize a lot of the regulations that we got now in place yeah. was not in place back then. Red Eye wasn't worried about these regulations. There was none. Red Eye. No, there was women. My grandmother, my grandmother. What was his name again? Red Eye brother, Hinton? Brother, my grandmother, when she was got pregnant, when she was 12 and got married at 14, that what was team? legal in them days. People don't really? realize how it was. Elvis Presley, when he would start messing around with Priscilla, she was only 14. Wow. And a little Jerry Pre Lawler in them. Yeah, that's how it was with them. Because with the girls, what the father would do when they started sprouting tits, they try to marry them off. See, women did not have, that's why I, I don't But like, I mean, in the area where you live, there was a lot of incest? Yes, because see, women, y'all don't realize in the 50s, and in the 60s, women's had no say-so. You don't know how many wives I used to see walk down the street with black eyes. You could beat the crap out of your wife back in the day. In fact, if you didn't kick your wife ass, you would look down upon. There's laws now, like in Virginia, there was one law in room I was looking at, we were laughing about it. You can't beat your wife in, in, in front of a church on a Wednesday. On a Wednesday? Yes, uh, but you can't beat her in front of the church. Thursday, it's all right, It though. was legal to beat your wife. It was legal to, not to, to spank your kid, but to freaking beat them. I mean, parents back in them days would beat you with switches. Now, you're talking the 60s? The, yes, yes. It, 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 that's, none of this stuff changed until the 80s. That's what people keep missing. In the 70s, you can well, kick I, the I, shit I out of your wife. I wasn't alive for it. Right. In the 70s, you could kick the shit out of your wife. You could beat the hell out of your kid. Everything, everywhere? Everywhere. It, it, it was like that. Bro. They were just beatings you everywhere? Know, Everybody was people. just you know, beating people. People? people? These people would tell you, they got ass whooping when they were young. Ask anybody over the age of 50. They would tell you, yes, they used to get, they used to get ass whooping. I know, I'll tell you this, maybe to get a little personal, I know... My father, oh my, my father came from a large Italian family. Uh, the grandfather owned a large construction company. I think there were 13 kids um, from my grandmother's side of the family as far as her siblings go. And that grandfather used to beat the fuck out of all of them. Yes! All of them. Yes! The men and the women. They would make you go get the, the stick to whoop your ass with. Go cut, cut me a switch, boy. They say, you better get me a good one, because if you don't get me a good one, I'll go get a bigger one. You want to hear a horrible story? And again, I think it kind of ties into almost what you were but saying. But that's how... That's Granted, how this was the North. We used to get the shit kicked out of us. But when this, when this what would be my great-grandfather died, a multimillionaire from owning this construction company, he gave his inheritance to the six boys. One of, them, the, one of the siblings had died. They got hit by a train. Mm. But the six girls got... Not a penny. No. They got nothing. No. For out of millions of dollars. And this guy had to have died in the 60s, maybe? Yeah. 70s? Because women... women Can you could, believe that? Yes, because women could not attain property. I mean, women could not buy property. You didn't know that. I just you? thought that was insane. Well, stop and think about this. And cruel. Well, well, think about this. In 2008, two. 2008. Yeah. President Obama, former President Obama, took a sign, the Lit It, Let Belly Act. The what? Lit It, Lit It, Let Belly, like Lead Belly, your belly. Yeah. Lead, like Lead. A Lead Belly? Lead Belly, like your belly. Yeah. A piece of lead, like in a gun. Yeah. Lead, like metal. Yeah. Lead, that's the day. The Lit, lit Lillian. Lillian's name. You you laughing? The Lillian Lead Belly. Right. Okay. They understand me. You what, but I mean, what is it? It's a it's a guarantee women's 
the same pay as men that work the same position. 2008. Wow. The bill is not even 10 years old. Isn't that something? Another example. I've always said this. People ask me about racism in wrestling. We got about a minute, minute and a half. That's all I need. All right. People always ask about racism, and I answer every question the same way. I've never seen a lot. I've seen racism, but I saw more sexism. Sexism. How so? Well, there have never been a woman that got the same treatment in wrestling than they do a wrestler, a male wrestler. And we all know that. And You're talking about recently, the talent. And, and tell, and, well, they had a talent. I mean, the women master like George Graver and these girls, they, they, the boys, you say that, 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 that nobody could outwork a, 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 a woman named Judy Garland, was named Judy, Judy Martin? Huh? Judy Martin? Judy Martin. Every wrestler knew that. She was the best worker we had in the, everywhere she went. Really? Yeah, yeah. She was fantastic. Even I hear a lot of wrestlers walking by Daniel, Paul Jones, John Weaver, they all said none of, none of the boys could outwork Judy Martin. Really? None of us. Never knew that. I saw Moolah. Uh, all the wrestlers flew in for this show in Charlotte. All, everybody flew in. Moolah drove. Every wrestler got a hotel. Now, she's a world champion. Yeah. Everybody got a hotel. Muda slept in a the car. They wouldn't buy her a hotel. Get out of here, really? Wow. That's why she hung around for so many years. She was waiting for that recognition. And, and how old was she when she got recognition? Give you oh another example. Oh, my God. I, 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 Again, I give we're you, running out of time. I, but I give you the best. I give you the two best examples in the world. Real quick. Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Who did the cheating, Hillary or Bill? Bill. Who got the blame? Hillary. Uh, Jeffrey Timberlake and Janet Jackson. Super Bowl incident. Ripped off her... her her br exposed her breasts. He did it. Yeah. Who got the blame? Janet. That's how we do. We do that now. Like I watched the wrestlers. A wrestler had a girl in every town. This one girl wait for this wrestler. She, almost, she called. He called a girl. They called the, 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 the wrestling women that that loved them. Tribal bought them food, got them a hotel, did everything for them. They were like a, a wife on the road. Did did more for them than their own wife. And what they call them, arena rats. rats. Call them cunts, douchebags, all kind of these names. That's we, that's a little cruel. Yeah, but rats we, is... we do that now. Look at look in the get not to get into politics. Who is the person that everybody picks on in, in politics? Every, Nancy Perosa. Why does everybody pick on her? Because she's the first woman to hold that position. No. Oh. All right, well, All right Tony, we're running out of time. Speaking of, know that, of the first person to hold the position, Tyler Rex, we wish her the best. You know, hopefully she's going to have a, a happy existence going forward. Uh, it's a. It's, she, he gonna, I'm going to tell you something, though. No, no offense to him. Yeah. He's going to have a hard time getting laid. Well, I'm not. He, he should have kept that's that. That's not my point. He should have kept that penis so he could whack off. You think he? Because, oh, but but he's six foot four, muscular, got a chin like Sergeant Slaughter. Are you freaking ripping me? Who gonna lay that? I mean, he was nice looking as a man, looked big and rugged. But a big rugged looking woman with a chin like Sergeant Slaughter and wear a freaking size 14 shoe and Tony. six foot four. You gotta be into a lot of kinky stuff to lay him. He's you know what? A hard time getting late. He's just buy him a deal to us. There's, uh, there's someone out there for everybody, I guess. Tyler Rex, if we he found somebody. God bless him. We wish side. you the best. We hope whether you love a man or a woman, you find one that makes your heart beat faster than it does now. I have no idea how to end this other than to say for the Hall of Famer, it's the USA Tony Allen. I'm God Dan Marotti. Dear Lord, we hope we didn't offend too many people. Until we speak again, you and yours, be well, He's not the cutest stay healthy. Woman in the world, bro. World Wrestling Federation was live at the Nassau Coliseum in Long Island, New York, Sunday, February the 23rd, 1986. In the opening contest, Rene Goulet beat George Skoland. Lanny Poffo with the win over Terry Gibbs. C.V. Afi defeated Barry O. Pedro Morales victorious over Les Thornton. Tony Atlas battled Hercules to a draw. Cowboy Bob Orton beat Danny Spivey. Tito Santana and Corporal Kirchner with the win over Nikolai Volkov in the Iron Sheik. 
Jesse the Body Ventura defeated Uncle Elmer. And in the main event, the WWF Intercontinental Champion Macho Man Randy Savage retained the title over George the Animal Steel via countout. If you are in Long Island Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our acclaimed Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports in the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Inside Us Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay per view watch alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021.